Hey guys, John Adamson, the Rehab and Documentation Guru, enjoying an absolutely gorgeous fall day. It's got to be about mid-70s. If you're in the shade, the breeze is cool. I'm drinking a nice coffee. What more could you ask for? Well, you could ask for another video from me. And today, I'm going to be addressing a question that was posed by somebody on a geriatric therapy group on Facebook. So I'm doing a direct response to this person's question. So she does mobile outpatient therapy. And she has a patient, or she's had patients, where she get ready, gets ready to discharge them and they don't want to be discharged. So she, one, she sounds like a very nice person who this these patients just want to keep around. They've gotten to know her, they've gotten close to her. Like any relationship, they don't want it to end. They're afraid they're not going to see her again. She may be one of the very few people that's in there, you know, being involved in their life. And they're bored and they're lonely. And this therapist has met more of a need from a psychosocial aspect, not just a physical aspect. So this therapist has really touched their lives and that's wonderful. So kudos to this therapist. We all probably face this at some point, unless we're just really jerks, that our patients don't want us to discharge. So what do you say to that patient? As you can probably guess, if you've followed my videos in the past, it all boils down to what is the definition of medical necessity? What pays the bill? What makes it so that we can keep coming in? You know, I was basically asked this very same uh, question by a therapist that I work with who wants to qu questions whether or not she should continue a patient on maintenance. Up, oh, the device is getting hot on this beautiful day. Maybe if I adjust my grip, it won't make it so hot. So anyway, the question boils down to the medical necessity definition, which is summarized in this way. Care that is of medical necessity per insurance is so complex that only you could safely and effectively do that. So complexity. First of all, complexity of the patient. Is the patient so medically unstable or has so much evolution of their symptoms that you could po not possibly safely and effectively turn them over to a non-skilled person without your skills and knowledge, without your expertise? Is that one aspect of the complexity? Or number two, the patient might be clinically stable, but what you need them to do to keep them where they're at safely and effectively is so complex but there's no way a non-skilled person could do it. So there you have it. And so I, what I would do is I would take a patient through the medically, medical necessity definition. Medical necessity care, or care that is medically necessary, is of such complexity, either because of the patient and or because of the complexity of the techniques, that a non-licensed person could not safely and effectively do it. And therefore, because it does not meet those criteria, I must discharge you at this time. That's how you discharge a patient. And you proceed with discharge, and of course, every patient has a right to appeal the decision to discharge. So you have them sign off on whatever form, form you're using for notice of Medicare non-coverage. They appeal it, and suppose Medicare decides in their favor. Well, you continue for a time, and then you proceed with discharge again, and if they appeal it again, and Medicare says, okay, keep on going, then you keep on going, and then you try to uh, discharge again, and you get the picture. Sorry, I gotta decline this spam call. I'm getting a lot of uh, scam calls. Anyway, that's how you discharge a patient who wants to stick around, wants to stick around because you're such an awesome therapist. Anyway, hope you're having a great day. Take care and God bless.